your lover, it's your ever-loving mom. Hey, what are you doing? I've got to get to that office and get those pictures before Roger or anybody else sees them. Look, I know you're mad at me now, but if this all got over and done with today, I think you'd find a way to forgive me. Uh, would you relax? There's nobody at the station at this hour. already open. I just finished vacuuming. Oh. I wonder if I could prevail upon you to go back and just vacuum all my work off my desk for me. Oh, no, sir. I never touch your desk. I never even look. I'm just kidding, Margaret. Good morning. I can, I can do the rest. Okay. Hey, um, you haven't been sleeping well. I mean, here, since we've been here, you haven't been sleeping well. Is it because it's a new place? Am I making too much noise? No. Well, I must be keeping you awake for you to notice. Oh, no, 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 I only, I just, I half noticed. I think you should start sleeping upstairs. Again? I, I mean, what, is it too crowded here? You can't be going off to work exhausted every morning. I'm not. I'm not. This, this, it's not a problem for me at all. 
Look, you don't have to keep an eye on me every minute. I'm not going anywhere. Hey, that's not why I sleep with you. It never has been. It never will be. Things are different now. Some things are different. See you here already? Hey! Hey! Hi. How you doing? Good. Hey, uh, you. This thing is very cool. Did they show you how to work? Very it? cool, huh? Yeah, Uncle. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Uncle Starbucks and I stayed up all night working on this thing. Good. So, Frank, what new instrument of torture is this? You are gonna love this. Would you just listen to me for a minute? David, I can't talk about this Look, right you've now. you've got plenty of time, okay? So now you rescue the pictures and Thorpe continues looking for dirt on the DA. Eventually, he's gonna run into Selena. Yes, maybe eventually he will. So will she tell him everything is my question. I don't know. I have asked myself that a thousand times. Couldn't you ask her not to? David, she's gonna want something in return. Money, probably. I just, I'm not gonna go that route, okay? Okay, okay, so let's say she tells Thorpe everything. Will he spill it to Ham? He might not. But... There'd always be the threat that whatever he said do, you'd have to do, right? David, I don't know. I just can't have this conversation now, okay? Gotta look ahead at how the rest of this is gonna go down. Now, if, 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 if what I'm hearing is correct, you're gonna have to tell him everything this time before he hears it from somebody else. Are you prepared to do that? David, he loves me. I know, and that makes it easier to forgive some things, but hard to forgive others. Now, you know what I'm talking about, Jilly. All I know is what I can live with and what I can't live with. Oh, hi, Good morning, Mr. Thorpe. Um, have you seen Nadine anywhere? At this hour? Well, she had to come in. She's taping three shows this morning, so she has a lot of preparation stuff to do. I came in with her, but then I lost her somewhere. Did you check the studio? Ah, very good. Bridget? Oh, I get all turned around with all these hallways and stuff. Come on, I'll show you. Thanks. Okay, uh, the door to the studio is right over there. Great. Um, so have you heard from Hart lately? Why are you always asking me about my son? Am I? I guess I just wonder about him, that's all. WSPR. Um, hold on a second. I'll check for you. Let me see. Uh, Mr. Thorpe? Yeah. There's a phone call for you. I think it sounds personal. Um, well, find out who it is. It's Selena from Honeydew Escort. It's not a personal call, and yes, I'll take it. Well, you're a very hard person to get a hold of and meet with. Yes, I most certainly do. How soon can you be here? What are you doing? You know caffeine's bad for the baby. Baby? I don't want breakfast in bed or anything else. It's no. not poison, Blake. At least you want the coffee. Oh, I want you to leave. Blame it on your boyfriend who left the door unlocked and you unprotected. Now, I mean it. All right. At least let me replace this for you. I'd rather go naked. What do you want me to do, fall on my knees? You know, it's just so typical. It just sums up everything about you. Sarcasm, styrofoam cups, and a wax paper bag. Can't tell you how treasured I feel. Would you rather I fetched well water and milk the cow? Woke up feeling a little guilty this morning. Gee, I wonder if I should apologize for trying to drown my daughter. Well, it's on the way to work. Plus, it's close to the dry cleaners. Everything is just so disposable with you, Mother. You're a thoroughly modern miracle. And I don't believe for a second that you came here to apologize. You came here hoping that I would, and you can forget it. I know you think my every purpose in life is to make you feel treasured. You have reminded me of it often enough that I even bought it. But you know what I found out for all my trouble? It can't be done. You are like a vacuum. You suck up everything, and there is nothing left. You're like one of those, those binge purge eaters. You stuff yourself full and then you throw it all up again. Well, think about it. Are you happy with Ross? Yes. Does he make you feel treasured? 
Or do you find yourself thinking, if he really cared, he would have stayed five minutes longer? Or he would have used a different tone of voice? Or he would have given me a better gift than the one he gave me? Is this your last stab at motherliness? Because don't keep it up on my account. I know what a strain it is. I don't blame you for having any doubts about Ross. You know, he's been married once for a few weeks at the most. And she promptly went insane. Well, if he didn't have a thing for neurotics, you'd never have a chance. Now, you probably think that I'm going to relish seeing you get hurt. But the fact is, it is so inevitable, I can't even bring myself to care. It's like weeping myself to sleep over the future demise of the solar system. You will be you, and Ross will be Ross. And that is the cruelest fate anybody could wish on you. And you know something else? You're right about me and motherhood. I don't even know why I came here. I knew what you were going to say. I knew what I was going to say. It's all humbug performed in the name of some mystical ritual that you and I just never could locate. I won't subject you to it anymore. I quit. Hey, buddy. Whenever you get a call, this light, it lights up. You take the receiver, phone receiver, and you put it on here like this, and you turn it on. How much is this thing costing? Uh, who's, who's paying for it? Nobody. It's free. It's free? Nothing's free. Okay. Everybody pays for it. You pay for it, I pay for it, Frank pays for it. Sure. On the phone bill, there's a thing in the corner. It says TDD surcharge. TDD. Everybody pays for that. It's a few cents a month. Yeah. When you get a message, prints right here. So who am I going to be merrily typing off to if, unless everyone I know gets one of these? No, no. There's, there's something called a relay service, and it's free. Whenever you get a call, this lights up. You take the receiver, you put it on here, hit the on button, okay? You dial an 800 number and an operator comes on. And then you punch in the name of the person and the number that you're going to call, and the operator prints it to them or reads it to them, all right? And then if there's a response, it just comes right up on here on the screen. On the screen, right here. It's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> you, can, you can contact all your old girlfriends. Oh, you can't. <laughs> Look, um, hey. Maybe I'm talking too fast here. It's all, it's all in this manual. Well, I can't wait to get outside and try this out. Watch this light, okay? I'm gonna call you, okay? Oh, Edith is coming at 11. I love you. Thanks, baby. Bye. See you. Take care. Hey, you got a great place here. What's the matter with you? Guess I'm officially a deaf person. Look, Frank, you gotta do me one more favor. Sure, anything. I don't know how long I'm gonna be like this. And the doctors, they can't say or they won't. Now, Har Harley's been great taking care of me, but that can't go on forever. Come on, it's no big deal to her. She loves you. No, no big deal? If things don't turn around pretty quick, it's going to be a big deal. Now look, Harley's got a lot going for her. She's got a lot going on in her life. And the last thing she needs is to be saddled down to some boyfriend who's only operational from his neck to his navel. <laughs> Come on. You weren't no great prize before you got in this wheelchair. Come on, man. man. Hey, Frank, she still Frank, fell in love with you, didn't Frank. she? Frank, all I'm saying is she didn't expect this. I'm getting really good at telling it what people are saying, knowing the words. But I don't know what they're feeling if I can't hear their voice. If I can't hear them slamming pots and pans in the kitchen, you know? Now, the day may come when Harley wants to move on. I'm not going to know it, and I don't think she's going to tell me. So I need someone who's going to tip me off if that happens. And since you're my best friend, You've been nominated. 
Do you think you can do this for me, Frank? Sure, buddy. Tell me, Nadine, was this blessed event wholly unexpected, or are you a wonder of modern science? <laughs> well, there were no test tubes involved, Roger. Yeah. How'd Billy take the news? He was overjoyed, of course. Especially with Mindy gone. That left a big gap in his life. Well, I don't have to tell you. Imagine what it would be like if you had a little baby to console you for losing heart. Here he is now, the stud. Excuse me, right. Well, no, it's just a figure of speech drawn from the animal kingdom. I ah, see, you sound to me like you're a little jealous. <laughs> Next diaper I expect to see, it's the one I must. It'll be on my grandchild. No, <laughs> Roger, that can't be true. It was just a little while ago that, that you were thinking about fatherhood with Mindy and... Oh, I'm sorry. That was very insensitive of me to bring that up. Water under the bridge, Nadine. Hey, I see one bright spot in that whole sorry mess. At least uh, our families didn't have to crossbreed, did they? I, I don't think we have to talk about this. You here for a reason? This is a workplace. I see my wife. Darn, I looked all over. I couldn't see her. Oh, by the way, Raj, how long have you been intending on working her? Oh. Wait a minute, Billy. Listen, we can find a replacement for Nadine at any time. Wait a minute. Nobody's going to step hey, in oh, here oh, and oh, take oh, my oh, job. Darn. You're over 40 years old. This could be a very difficult pregnancy. Well, I plan on taking time off. That's why I'm taping shows in advance. In fact, we're doing three today. Bridget, come on. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. You're doing a triple load today? Uh, I think I'll leave this domestic drama to the domestic arena. Roger, wait. Wait. I didn't expect you in so early. I wanted to get these on your desk first. I have yet to see my desk. Oh, well, if you would take a minute and look these over, I'll get you some more coffee. Jelly, what are these? They are the first two weeks of scripts for the six-minute news segment that's coming next month. Why are you showing them to me? This is Holly's business. Yes, well, it is sweeps month, and, and some of these topics are a bit gamey, and I'm Jilly, like to... Jilly, Jilly, I'm not remotely interested. Uh, hello. I'm, uh, I'm here to fill out a job application. Oh, sure. Fill it out right over here. Thanks. Bridget, mm -hmm. um, I'm expecting that lady from the escort service within the hour. When she comes, please send her right into my office, okay? Assuming that you can find it again. I can, Mr. Thor. Bridget, come on, we've got a lot of work to do. We've got to get going. Okay. Jilly, yes. you wouldn't by any chance know why Selena and I keep missing each other, would you? Well, no, I, I know you've tried to reach her. And she, interestingly enough, she claims that she's tried to reach me several times. In fact, she's even been here. And each time she's been told that I'm either busy or I'm out. Well, the only time I know of is when you Let me put it to you this way. I know you disapprove of my investigation of Marley. Okay? I know that uh, you probably are backing him in the campaign, but you wouldn't be foolish enough to... Nah. Not my jelly. David, now, you have got to help me now. Well, I will tell him that we, he's needed in the studio. He said she was on her way. Listen, listen to me. You wait till we pass, all right? Oh, he's going to ask her who she talked to and why he didn't get his messages, and she's going to tell her. David, wait till we are gone. Then you go into his office, you get those pictures, and put them in my desk. Jilly, car. no, I won't. Now, you'll hate me if you have to, but this is the only way, and you know it. Excuse me, Jilly, do I have the right day? Uh, ro um, the right day, Ross? Yeah, I was going to shoot those campaign ads, but Nadine says she has a studio book. Oh, well, I'm sure Nadine just didn't check the schedule. Um, I will be right with you, okay? Okay, I appreciate that. I will be in Roger's office. Would she leave? <laughs> Trapped in a room with me, the story of your life. Just don't want to have to explain myself to Maureen Bauer, of all people, not after last night. <laughs> oh, no, that wouldn't do. Being seen leaving your daughter's apartment? I don't know what you find so amusing. <laughs> you, Mother, you just waltz in here with a speech of your life. Probably started composing it the day I was born with the grand exit line of all time. I quit. <laughs> but you can't, can you? You just can't sweep on out of here because of what people might think. Is any of this the least bit instructive to you? I don't find any lesson in it. What exactly is it that you're quitting, mother? Or ex-mother, whatever it is I'm supposed to call you now. How can you quit a job you never had? Who 
do you think raised you? Oh, raised. Are we, are we back to that one again? No, Mother, I wasn't raised any more than canaries or geraniums are raised. I was fed, I was clothed, I was trained. Not to that a schoolgirl obedience luster other girls seem to glow with, I'll be the first to admit. But raised implies elevation, to be brought to a place higher. That I was not. You still think I'm dirt. And most people would find no flaw in your thinking there. I am so sick of hearing how unloved you were. All those beautiful clothes, your nice straight white teeth, your freedom to never have to do anything you didn't want to do. Where do you suppose that came from? Believe me, I am not trying to induce any guilt here. It's been painfully clear for a long time that the stork did not drop off a conscience with the rest of the package. Okay, just imagine, if you will, a detective from another planet sent to Springfield to examine the strange life of Polly Norris. Now, what makes this woman tick, he wonders, as he scratches his extraterrestrial head. Here she is, growing up, spoiled, sweet, and dumb in Springfield. And here she is, shooting her husband and going to jail. Now, here she is, being tortured and dragged through the jungle by this same monster which I went through for you. Now here she is, leaving the center of her known universe for exile in Europe. Marrying again to a rich person this time, which I went through for you, to someone who was as appealing as acid rain. Now here she is back again, in the humiliating bosom of all these people who watched her make the same mistakes the first time around. Now, what made her go through all these strange peregrinations? What accounts for this woman's life? Our strange, scaly friend stops and realizes that nothing accounts for her life except you. Except for being stuck and afraid to bail because of what all those terrible people in your head might say. You know what I want to know? I want to know why you didn't hand me over to Daddy when you had the chance. At least he wanted me. Oh, but you couldn't let him win, could you? Because I loved you. Why is that so hard for you to realize? Because I know what love feels like now, Mother. Don't you get it? I have something to compare it to. And hating Daddy isn't the same thing as loving me. In fact, hating Daddy is what made it impossible. I... I know you need some kind of excuse to, to explain your miserable self to yourself, but this just doesn't wash. Oh, no. Don't think that I don't give you credit. That ungrateful, I'm not. I am proud to acknowledge to you and the whole world that you made me exactly what I am today. Nobody made you. Hell made you. <laughs> Finally, we agree. Well, actually, this is my first time, and I'll tell you, I could just kiss you for this service. Yeah, yeah, just talk slowly, I know. And what else? Okay, this is a call from Harley for Mallet. I'll fire you at your birth. times do you usually let it ring before you... Yeah, but um, what I'm thinking is that maybe, maybe he didn't see the light, so if... Right, just call back later. <laughs> Thank you. Why are you feeling studio time to lost Marlar anyway? It sounds like something crooked to me. Hardly. Hi. What? Nothing. Nothing. Now what am I supposed to do all morning? Oh, well, boy, listen to this. Middle-aged woman has grandchild first, own child later. No, that can't be right. Oh. 
did I have to find out from somebody else that you're pregnant, Mommy? Well, I wanted to tell you, honey, I really did. It was on the tip of my tongue, but I thought that you're going through so much right now. What? I just didn't want to... I didn't want you to feel like... What? What? Feel like what, Mom? All right, Nadine. Put your coat on. Honey, why? I am not cold and, uh, and I'm not... Cold. Yeah, I know. You've told me that 15 times. But a woman in your condition needs to have special care. I'm taking you out for a healthy and nursing but breakfast. But I've got work to do. No arguments about it. I'm going to do this every day until you have sense enough to do it for yourself. All right. I guess I could squeeze Good. it in. Mm -hmm. Hi. No, actually, uh, this is my second time. Sort of. every time somebody airs one of my campaign ads? <laughs> How'd that creep in there? You know, this is a very standard contract for programming that we generate. Uh, we're not in the habit of operating as a vanity studio, much as we appreciate being chosen. Uh, you're welcome. You know, I hired over the half of the technicians that you have here way back when, because I knew that they would do a good job for the station. Blake agreed with me, by the way. Uh, and you're happy with her work, are you? Oh, very much so. In fact, I'm thinking of offering her a much more permanent position after the election. No, she won't accept it. She backs winners. Yes? Mr. Thorpe, it's Bridget. A guard just called up from the lobby. They stopped a visitor who didn't really look right to them. It might be that woman that you're waiting for from Honeydew Escorts. Well, uh, why don't you go down there and check it out, Bridget? I'll leave you alone, Roger, to enjoy your melons. I think you might enjoy staying. No, I have a very delicate digestive tract. Besides, I hate it when my hair gets all mussed up. I wonder if your merriment will survive the public disclosure of the number of calls your office has made to this very same escort service. <laughs> yeah, laugh it up, laughing boy, because I have hard evidence from one of your trusted staff. Roger, I am the district attorney. Now, given that, think of another motive, one less sordid, if that's conceivable to you, as to why I and one of my trusted staff would be calling that particular number. Could it be that we're simply doing our job and that we are right in the middle of an investigation? What a concept. Better luck next time. Where'd you come from and what are you looking for? I needed to voice over scripts for the campaign spots we're doing. Well, they're not there. Well, they shouldn't be, but what do you know? Here they are. <laughs> Julie? Did you tell them? Tell who what? Tell who what? Marler. I mentioned the escort service, and you know what? He knew. He'd been warned. He had a plausible explanation already rehearsed. Well, Roger, no, I didn't tell him. Perhaps his plausible explanation was simply the truth. The man is hiding something. All right, I know it. I can smell it on him. Like I can smell sulfur from a match. Excuse what? me, um, that lady from Honeydew Escorts is here. Oh. Well, um, I don't think you'll be needing her now. I can get rid of her for you. Well, no, no need. Let's hear what she has to say. I'd like to speak to Bridget alone for a moment, if you don't mind. Me? Mm-hmm. Of course. I just need to get one more thing off your desk. Bridget, I know that you are a close friend to my son, and, and I know that I can trust you. Trust me for what? Well, I want you to tell Selena that I'm in a meeting and uh, ask her to wait. Mr. Marler is working here today. I would like you, if you will, to keep a really close eye on this. See, I have a feeling that they were close personal friends in the past.
I just want you to form an opinion by observing them, you know. I know it's a shocking <laughs> thought, but I don't know. I just feel that uh, we should hold our public servants to as high a standard as we would hold ourselves. Don't you agree? Sure. I just talked to Costa's wife in Crete. Uh, Eleni's mother is fine. They took her home, but Eleni has left. She left Crete? No, she left home in the village. Her grandmother has permitted her or ordered her, I can't tell, to a place the family has. It's like a retreat by the sea. I've never been there. Was she alone? Yes, either Eleni or her grandmother thought it would be good for her. Well, Gustavus, you know, she needs to be alone. Oh, you will respect her wishes. Yeah, well, Michael wouldn't. Whatever he wants, he gets. Respect her wishes, but how do you know she isn't wishing for you? <laughs> now listen, don't call her. That's how you talk yourself out of it the last time. Yeah, I stole my ticket, though. Yeah, but you told me you bought that in the heat of the moment. How are you going to pay for it? Maybe I can get a group discount rate or something. Oh, honey, this is so sweet of you. Hey, I don't mind at all. But I spent so much time tracking you down, I'm going to have to leave pretty soon. Oh, that's okay. I don't mind. You don't mind a lot about me lately. <laughs> it seems like I spend half of my time trying to change everything about me and the other half trying to keep you the same. <laughs> well, I gotta go talk to Vanessa. Oh, about what? You gonna tell her about us? Well, honey, you don't have to do no, that. No, no, no. I, Bill's gonna have to find out about this, so Vanessa's gonna have to know, too. Well, if I, if she already knows I'm pregnant. Kind of slipped out. <laughs> And I'll be happy to tell her anything else that, that you need. I mean, I don't mind. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I kind of made uh, certain overtures. I, I, I just have to go talk to her, so. What do you think? That you left? I haven't heard or seen you do that in, oh, longer than I can count. I just hope I, I remember how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did it again. You don't have to worry about it. You can do it. <laughs> Well, then, I guess you should go. Um, I'll be okay. I, I can take a cab or walk. Oh, no way. No, I'll tell you what. I'll send Jody back in there. He can drop you wherever you need to go. Okay. Thanks for breakfast. You're welcome. See you. Uh, Mom. Listen, I, uh, need to ask you a favor. I need to borrow a thousand dollars. Look, I know it's a lot, but I'll pay it back by the first of the year. Okay, honey. I don't mean to be mysterious about this, but if I tell you what I think what the money's for, I, I don't think you're gonna give it to me. Well, maybe you shouldn't then. <laughs> Isn't that sort of amazing or, and even wonderful that things that usually go wrong don't? In my breaststroke. Well, how long have you been like this? It, where's Frank? He had to go. And don't don't blame Frank. I made him leave. Are you hurt? Am I hurt? What's left to hurt? Miss Cooper, what happened? I don't I don't know yet. Just help me get him back in the chair, please. Ah. Well, you guys just. Tie me down to bed and you can redecorate me. Go with the furniture. That's it. I've had it. I don't care if he shouts the roof down. I'm not leaving him here alone again. I'm glad it was coming to this. Do you know anybody who can be here full time? I mean, five days a week if necessary. It doesn't matter what it costs, the department will pay for it. Ooh, that's too good to pass up, the money I mean. And Valentino here is all right too when he wants to be. So what are you saying, you'll do this? If it suits you, I'll have no trouble getting my other cases covered. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Is this your way to get back at me? Talking behind my back? A little getting even? If you really want to torture me, why don't you have her move in? Hey, listen to me. A decision has been made. You weren't asked to be a part of this, okay? Now, I can't keep running back and forth like this, not knowing what I'm going to find when I come in here. So from now on, when I am not here, Edith will be here. What? 
Do you understand? I can shut you out a lot easier than you can shut me out. Did she tattle on me already? What happened? Um, again, so soon? I mean, even after last night? I went there to apologize. And did you? I guess I forgot. So what, then? Well, naturally, she blamed me for every terrible thing that she's ever done to me. Huh? Blake didn't say that. You know, you and me, we assume that we're talking about the same girl. It is not so. There is the Blake before you failed her and the Blake after you failed her. And you're never going to know when it happens. But she will inform you sooner or later. Maybe for the rest of your life. I don't know. I'll concede Blake and I have already had conversations like that. I wouldn't concede anything. It weakens your case against me as a scorned woman gone berserk if I'm ever right again. She's still young, Holly. She's got a lot to learn. That's my line. Allowances must be made. For her? Yes. Well, I'm young, too. And I have yet to punch my way out of this plastic bag I was born in and hit something hard enough to draw blood. This is as real as it gets to me. Hating you and hating her. Don't expect me to be civilized about this. You consider yourself warned. Cafeteria here somewhere. I saw a sign in the elevator. Could you help me, please? Uh, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't work here. Why don't you uh, ask her? You're empty-handed. Yes. I left it. Pictures, folders. They're still there. Good. No, David. I wanted to hide that person that I used to be. So what do I do? I did exactly what she would have, exactly what she did. Nothing. So I guess when push comes to shove, I'm just going to always help myself first, huh? But you know that better than anybody else. They didn't even look at each other. Well, no, of course they wouldn't. No, not like they weren't even trying to look at each other. He looked almost directly at her, didn't even see her. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Well, we'll see. Would you please send her in? Sure, but she just went down the cafeteria. Oh. All right. I'll wait. Thanks very much, Bridget. And uh, I'm glad to see that my son chose his friend so wisely.
This is CBS. Maury Povich presents the class of Tales Tonight on Channel 10 News.